welcome back to Beyond Recovery, everybody. So my guest today is Clarissa Burt, and we are going to talk all about self-esteem. She had a book she released in November of last year called The Self-Esteem Regime. Clarissa, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you? Matt, I'm doing really well, thanks. I'm doing really well. This 4th of July here in the United yes. States. I don't know when your show goes out, but... Yeah, yeah. I tell you recording. Yeah, happy yeah, 4th of July. It's 4th of July. It's yes. a holiday. And I'm so Great. pumped about what I do that, you know, I do... I, I just it love 24 7 it doesn't matter if it's a holiday let's just do this that's great i love it i love that energy that's so cool so yeah to, uh, let's, you know uh, let's, let's just start with the book and then we're gonna what we're gonna do we'll get into your uh origin stories because you do have uh you know you were raised with a um you know with, with some some alcohol involved with the, with the way you were raised with your parents and such so i definitely want to get into that but let's talk a little bit about the book first. What, uh, how has the book been going for you? What, you know, what, what caused you to write this book? Let's start with that right. one. Yeah, so cool. Well, the book is doing really well. I'll show it to you. It's called The Self-Esteem Regime. Beautiful. It's uh, the action plan or an action plan for becoming the confident person you were meant to be. And um, it's in Barnes & Noble, which is really exciting, Matt, because I walk into the Barnes & Noble store, which, by the way, is basically the, the last, you know, uh, hurrah as far as bookstores bookstore, are concerned in the United States. Um, and so I walk in and I go, and I, there's my book and it's right next to, I don't know if you'll be familiar with these names, but right next to Brene Brown mm. and Deepak Chopra mm. and Dr. Joe Dispenza, like all at the same time. And I think to myself, wait, 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 just a second. I got to pinch myself and say, my first book is among some of the greatest gurus yeah. in personal growth and self-help that, you know, that exists today. And so it's a, it's an absolute honor um, for me, not only to, you know, be in Barnes and Noble, but to be in such great company and to thank again, Roman and Littlefield, the publisher uh, of the book, um, when they picked it up, I knew that we were onto something. And that is, these are very, very difficult times. We are been, we have been going through the last two and a half, three years, times that are uh, unkind, uncertain, times of loss, loss of friends, loss of family, loss of faith, loss of money, loss of jobs, loss of identity, loss of loss. Not only, but now they're projecting even more loss with the food shortages and all the rest of the stuff that they're throwing at us. So, you know, that people are feeling, you know, destable, uh, uh, unstable or destabilized right now is not a surprise. These are the times that are rife with anxiety, depression, uh, the CDC came out recently with a report that said 44% of our school age kids, in other words, of uh, 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 high school kids and college students um, are either depressed, anxious, thinking about committing suicide or have committed suicide. These are astronomical numbers. These are really worrisome uh, numbers coming out. Uh, and we need to be really mindful about not only ourselves, but what's going on around us. Um, yeah, a lot of the school shootings you'll hear, oh, weren't there any signs? Didn't they know? I, who know? There are signs. And I think that we need to be really mindful, not because I want to talk about school shootings, but mm. certainly in our own families, mm. can we see that there is a tendency toward depression, anxiety, or potentially um, uh, suicidal thoughts. So the book goes so, the, the, the conversation goes so much deeper if you will, than self-esteem, because self-esteem, most people think, ah, oh, it's a fluffy kind of thing and I'll get to it when I get to it. And ah, it doesn't mean anything. What the hell does it really mean? And all of that. When I will offer up that self-esteem is everything you are. It's everything you say. It's how you dress. It's how you feel about yourself. It's the friends that you, uh, uh, that you make. It's you, the grades that you uh, have in school and not all of them. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, some of us are going to get A's in certain material and some stuff just doesn't resonate. You don't care. And you get a D. I mean, you know, I get that, but you know, how you feel about yourself is exactly what will, what you, what you'll be projecting out into the world and certainly uh, onto yourself. So. Mm, yeah. yeah. Great, great intro. And this is actually a perfect uh, part to, uh, to interject and just ask. So for me, like when I think of self-esteem, you know, I think of like self-confidence, I kind of think they're like there, I know there's some overlap and all that. What is your, like, how do you describe what self-esteem is? I mean, you gave a little bit of insight in there, but how does it differentiate from like confidence, for example? Well, self-esteem is how we value and how we perceive ourselves, right? It's mm. based on our opinions and our beliefs of ourselves. Self-confidence is an offshoot of happy, healthy self-esteem. Our confidence, mm. which means 
Confidence means, tr um, uh, sorry, it means um, truth. Uh, confidere. Uh, I'm losing myself in truth, I believe it is. And oh, so, no, okay. it, so it's the truth that we believe about ourselves, right? Oh, so gotcha. um, uh, it's the, it's the, it's the, uh, truth it's what we believe about ourselves i'm getting myself caught up now because i don't know what i just happened, happened. Yeah, but yeah. uh, self-awareness for example is how is being mindful it's being you know what is going on around us i want to be aware of how i'm treating someone i want to be aware of how i'm treating myself so there's lots of different terminologies that basically come back to the same thing and that is self-esteem is everything we are if our self-esteem isn't intact by the uh, the minute our feet hit the ground in the morning we're probably going to have some difficulties we're going to have some difficulties in relationships not only with others but certainly with ourselves and and those daily demons mm. that many of us uh have to deal with yeah absolutely so let's and let's get a little bit into we'll roll back the clocks not all the way back to we'll we'll get we'll shelf it for a minute talking about uh, your your upbringing with the relationship with alcohol before we do that though i want to just go back to when uh, the time period where you were in uh you're an actress you're a model and you had a realization and you had it very uh well worded in your book the beginning of your book about you know there was uh this feeling that you had you were never quite there's like an imposter syndrome never quite you know comfortable in your own skin and you realized being in the sort of, I think specifically you'd mentioned the model culture that it was, you, you even said it was like universal. There was this universal feeling. Those ladies that you were in there with, those girls you were in there with were feeling that same kind of like, there was a like misalignment between like the way that they're attempting to present themselves externally versus what they were feeling internally. And you mentioned well, in the book, you were the glass half empty person. Not only that, you felt that your glass was kind of cracked when you were looking at it too. So what was that sort of scenario um, and that aha moment for you? Yeah. I, I, okay. When it comes to other models, what I, what I think I said uh, is, is this, I, of course I can't speak for anyone else and I can't certainly speak for all models, but what I can tell you is that I was able to, understand that from the, some of the most beautiful women in the world, because they were absolutely drop dead gorgeous, that they all, they too dealt with self-esteem issues, whether it be alcoholism or drugs or um, um, toxic relationships or body dysmorphia or not a sense of not feeling good enough. So that's what I said about other models and how I was able to garner from not only that, but from the relationship that I that had with my mother and what I saw in my grandmom as well, mom being a beautiful woman and never wanting her picture taken, you know, she just never felt good enough for another million reasons. Grandmom, because she felt like she needed to lose weight. So she took two diet pills, choked on them and wound up in the hospital for six weeks. Mm -hmm. So I was watching many women around me and not really being, you know, living in alignment and being um, happy with themselves the way they were. Let's just put it that way. So um, the glass half full I don't even know if I saw a glass at the time. I just was mm. going along with what was really kind of what was. And I realized that there was one common denominator and that was a low sense or a self of very low self-esteem. Mm. Uh, so the sense of very low self-esteem was something that, um, and then I would run across other people and they just seemed to like have it all together. You know, they were like really happy, positive, successful. And I went, where's the disconnect here? Like, yeah. where, where, where is it that I am not? And it was self-esteem, obviously. Hmm. So the idea of self-esteem, when you when you talk to me about what do you want to know about my childhood? Yes, there was, I came from an alcoholic a household uh, on my father's side, not my mom's side. And, <clears throat> and that made for a very contentious place to grow up in. It was almost when I left, it felt it like when I left that house, I was leaving that house with PTSD um, because I was physically affected by it. I know that I was mentally affected by it, meaning I was um, you know, always living in fear, living fearfully. Uh, my stomach was always in a knot because you never knew what to expect. You never know what the, you know, what the reactions or, or the actions were going to be. So it was a very difficult place to be. And this is why I felt that it was such a great time, Matt, between where we are now mm. and all the difficulties. And then certainly I know that, you know, I also um, collaborate with domesticshelters.org. And during the two, 2020 and 2021, we were putting out a lot of PSAs, the public service announcements, because I have a media group. We were putting out a lot of interviews to help women and children that were home with the abuser, mostly women, okay? Um, some people say, yeah, men can be abused too. Okay, great. Yes. But most of the people that I was, we were talking to were women. 
And, um, and nobody should be abused by nobody at all. Uh, so the idea was, you know, there also that um, we were trying to, you know, impart great information to help people get away from, you know, uh, situations that were really unhealthy um, and toxic. So, so it all kind of, you know, again, I, when I said to you about the many different ramifications of uh, low self-esteem and how high self-esteem can absolutely change your life. Mm. So, and did you view that self-esteem, like the switch in self-esteem, was that, was that a choice? Was that something you had to practice? Where did it start to develop after you had that aha moment? Okay, this is, this is the secret sauce, the, the yeah. self-esteem aspect. How did that start developing and cultivating within yourself? Well, I had a really very strong sense of right and wrong. Mm. And I knew what felt right and I knew what felt wrong. Um, and I think it's all started from there. Uh, I, I sort of started on a crusade, if you will. And especially because my mother was an abused woman, I wanted to, uh, I made sure that I got her out of that house first off. Um, and that, you know, we got that side of the family onto a whole other path, happy, healthy, and moving forward in life. Um, and, and so I, I almost became a crusader, but you know, I was 18 years old at the time about what it meant to, you know, that it, the violence is never okay. It's just not okay. And so um, that was really a life-changing moment for me. That's when I decided that, and by the way, it was like changing. It didn't mean I changed overnight, right? It sure. meant I had to go through the ups, the downs, the trials and tribulations, the, you know, all of the things that I wasn't taught because I didn't have those tools in the shed. I had to go out and find those tools, make those tools, repair those tools, buy those tools, and whatever else. You know, when I was younger, I would spend most of my time, everything I read, Matt, was always a personal growth or a self-help book. Mm. I ne if I read, I wasn't reading fiction, you know, I wasn't reading, I, I wasn't reading biographies, I wasn't reading science fiction, uh, business, but I was reading self-help. So I knew, because we, back in my day, we didn't have computers, right? We didn't have it, the internet. We didn't have all of that. So the, the idea of being able to find support or support systems was, it just wasn't a thing. Yeah, sure. So this was really important to me. Um, I always, you know, played with the underdogs on the, you know, the uh, at recess in school. I wasn't a clicky kid. I didn't play with the mean girls. I didn't, uh, I wanted to be with the kid that was in the corner who was being marginated, that was maybe, uh, you know, who was being bullied, who what people were being unkind to, or that was just painfully shy. You know, I wanted to go and befriend that person. Um, a little later on and a couple of years later, I was up at the kindergarten, you know, for recess, I'd go up to the kindergarten and help the teacher either read, you know, I would read to the kids or I would help mark the papers or whatever it was that the kids needed because I had a very strong maternal sense mm. and maternal normally means, you know, very loving and very caring if they are caregivers. And so this is what intrinsically, um, notwithstanding the fact that I came from this background that was teaching me something different than what my true self was, um, so I had to, I had to along the way, um, um, have a coming to Jesus moment between the two. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So I, I imagine this book is, is a long time coming. Like this feels yeah. like just the way that, you know, getting to know you here, like this is yeah. something that's been on your radar. Like, where, did you always know you were going to, did you have this feeling you were going to write a book one day? Did you always have that? Or was that just kind of back then, you know, not okay. back then, not back then, not when I was a kid, but certainly, you know, when I hit my thirties, Certainly when I hit my 40s, I went, you know mm. what, I think I've got enough life experience now because, right. you know, let's face it, Mac, I'm not a psychiatrist, Matt, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist. You know, I don't have um, a degree in any of that. Uh, mm. You know, people say, well, what makes you, you know, why should we listen to you? Listen to me because I, right now I've got 63 years worth of experience right. that I can draw from uh, and a lot of uh, not only experience, but you know, of the reading of the, um, you know, I've collected a lot of information along the way. And certainly the life experience uh, is it's all in this book. Uh, mm -hmm. We have case studies of different women, 12 different case studies wow. of different women for the 12 different uh, chapters. We have Clarissa's Corner. We've got the Clarion Call. We've got reviews. We've got homework. We've got journaling. Uh, there's everything you could ever want in this book. The self-esteem regime is there if you are ready to, you know, to take to take the jump, to make the move. Uh, know that anytime you're going to work on yourself, it's going to be uncomfortable. Mm could be painful, 
and we're talking about mental health now. It could be um, it could be um, a book you'll read for a bit, put it down because you don't want to do the work, but you know you have to, so you pick it back up. You know, yeah. um, you're going to find out things about yourself you you knew you had to work on, and so okay, you're glad you're doing it now. And no, but there are going to be things you're going to find out about yourself as you're doing the work you didn't even know was a thing. You didn't even know it was something that you know potentially was holding you back, or it was part yeah. of your belief system that doesn't serve you. For sure, for sure. I could see this being really good to do in maybe small groups, you know, I don't yeah. sure if like, or like with a partner, because for me, like when I do self-development, there's so much that of the shadow work, it's shadow by, because I tend to, yeah. for by definition, I have it sort of put my blind spot. So if somebody, even my fiance yes. can come in and go, no, that that's, you're on the right path. I'm like, ah, you know, all I need is that external. Is, is there something here? Like, yeah, there's totally something there. It's funny that you just are getting to that now. You know what I mean? Well, so uh, the, interesting yeah. part, the interesting part is that I, I have a mastermind as well. And what I did mm -hmm. in the last mastermind is that, I, you know, we, we integrated the book. So whereas before it was a business mastermind, now it became a personal and business mastermind. Super and cool. what happened is there were 12 sessions and 12 chapters of the book. And of course, ah, every time they came back, they had to read that. the chapters. And what came out? Uh, from the, you know, the idea that they read the book and now it was a little bit more, when you start to take a business mastermind a little bit more personal and you get into people's lives, mm. it was, there was such a melding of yeah. the souls, if you will, of, yes. of the women that were a part of this mastermind. It was really incredible stuff. I mean, you're talking, one woman came and said, ladies, I need your prayers. My son tried to commit suicide this week. Right. Wow. To the point that I was talking about before, or yeah. Chiefs, girls, I don't, you know, I got a text, oh, come on, but I don't want to talk. One of my students, she was a professor at a university, committed suicide this week. Or um, please, my husband has stage four uh, prostate cancer. Um, can you girls all pray for? So you yeah. get into a place and a space with, and I could go on for the three months that all the different, and we had tears and Kleenex and clean up and all kinds of stuff. Um, and it was, it was such a, and I was told it was such a great, it was a, it was a supportive place to land that had been mm. created. So I love that, Matt. I love yeah. that the book was able to soften the business edges and bring us all together in a different way. That's wonderful. I love that. That's, uh, that's very special what you're doing there. What were some of the, uh, the authors in the books that really landed and resonated with you growing up? Like, was there like a Wayne Dyer? Or was there like- who Yeah, Wayne Dyer, yeah. Wayne Dyer, all, a lot of the Louise Hay stuff. Mm. The, um, uh, I don't always remember the author's name. Certainly I love um, uh, the Chicken Soap for the Soul series. I right. absolutely love um, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Oh, so good. Um, uh, what's the other book I've got over there? Subcon the Subconscious Mind. Mm. Um, all of these books that lead you down the path of, you know, better uh, the self-betterment, self-love, self-empowerment, um, personal growth, personal development. Um, those were the books, as I said before, that I read. These are the books that, um, that are, uh, you know, up on the, they're the, they're the books upon, you know, the shoulders upon which I stand, you know, um, I in, or, in order to be able to, uh, write the book that I've written. So, and you know what is, is really cool about what you're doing with, with your book there, there is like an immediate ability to integrate what you're learning from the book. Like you've mentioned that there's like times to journal, there's times to pause and do some work instead of just reading through it. And it gets you into that energy where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm learning. But then it's like, okay, what do I do with this? This yep. You have these break specific intentional breakpoints to then integrate what you're learning, which I think is super cool. Exactly. I, I assume that was deliberate with the, uh, the layout of the book. Yeah, it's yeah. deliberate. A lot of the stuff, but you know, um, if people say, well, what is, you know, self-esteem how do I start and where do I start? Well, right. first of all, self-esteem 101, don't compare yourself to anybody else. I don't care what mm. you see on, on social media. I don't care what filters they're, you know, they're using. <laughs> I don't care what kind of villas and Lamborghinis that might've been rented, you know, for the day. Uh, you know, a lot of this stuff yeah. is, per, is perception. perception. It's not always truth. Now, if the villa is real and the Lamborghini is real, that I want to be one of the first people to congratulate you mm. and to, you know, to really be happy for your success because Ooh. self is happy. Self-esteem means really being happy for somebody else. It doesn't mean feeling belittled by anyone or anything. Yeah. Um, and maybe there's some, a few things that you could learn from that person. Yeah. Um, define your values. Where's your value system? What's your moral code? Mm. You know, if you can go down and make a list and say, these are the things that I believe in. These are my values. Here's my moral code. It's my blueprint for life from which I will not deviate. 
that right there, if you can create that and live by that, you're, you're, you've already done of 80% of the work you need to do. Wow. Um, I, I just created something recently that I thought was really kind of fun. And it's, it's something people go, huh? What do you mean? I go, I, 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 I live high. I want to live high. And people go, hi, well, what do you mean? And I, well, it's honesty, integrity, gratitude, and honor. Ooh. So if you can live in honesty, and I mean radical honesty, I mean no BS honesty. If you can live in honestly with yourself and with others, if you can live in integrity, if you can live with gratitude, and I guarantee you, no matter how bad you think you've got things, you've got something to be really grateful for, if not many things to be really grateful for. Mm. And if you can live with honor, so H I G H, live high. Got it. Those, if you cannot nail those four things, you're doing, you are doing great. Now, we're all imperfect. We're going to, you know, we're not always going to meet the mark. We, we, you know, we're going to, you know, slide a little bit. But again, that is part of the blueprint that I feel is, and people go, oh, Clarissa, come on, that's, that's still impossible. How could you, I mean, you're asking me, it. it's not. It's not that impossible to be honest. It's pretty darn easy. You know, when you're honest with yourself and with someone else, when you honor someone else, when you're honest with them, when you're living in integrity with that person, no matter who it is, you then are living an honesty and integrity and an honor with yourself. The other thing I like to say, Matt, is don't betray your conscience. Mm. Think about that. Your conscience is always telling you what is right and what is wrong, what path to take, right? So if you betray your conscience and you don't listen, well, you're probably gonna have a price to pay. Right. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to bring you know, bad news, but you probably are. You're probably gonna have some sort of price to pay along the way. I have a question about like specifically the honesty. So the honesty for me and my experience is specifically uh, navigating certain family patterns that have developed over time. And when there are certain, you know, in my, in the, within my family dynamics that trigger me and really teleport me back into like 14 year old version of Matt, right? Sure, I know. So for me to be honest, I find it challenging not to be honest with like an edge or honest with like yelling and honest because I have this frustration built up inside yeah. me. What kind of advice could you well, give? Well, uh, and, and yeah, that? okay. So that's a question I'm going to answer you. It really has to yeah. come down to putting your big boy pants on. You're sure. not, in, you know, you're not in britches anymore. You're like, you, you got your big boy pants on. And that means, you know, when, when there's a trigger, um, you need to be standing strong in your stead. And what mm. that, I mean by that is you need to be really well rooted. And I've said this a million times before, when the hurricane, the tornado, the storm, whatever it is, is going to be coming through because that's life. It ebbs and flows and it's going to happen when you have all the tools in the shed that you need because you've read a book like mine or, or another one that you know, really helps to anchor you. You know, the storm comes through and you might lose a leaf or two. You could lose maybe even a branch, but you're not going to be, you know, uprooted with the storm and transported away. Mm. I right. Like yeah. So what you what and, and so why standing strong, you're stead with your family and your 15 year old you that now is no longer 15 years old. You are going to love them where they're at. Mm. You are going to gently with joy, ease, joy and glory, Ooh. create your boundaries, because a boundary is nothing more than showing people, teaching people uh, and enlightening people as to how you will and will not be treated. Mm. So as you move on in life, they pretty much stay the same. You need to love them where they're at. Right. You don't need to break away. Love them where they're at because their tools in the shed are different now than your tools in the shed. Right. Okay. And as you have vibrated up, as you have learned, as you've grown, you have bettered, you've matured, you have done that because you wanted to be a better person. It doesn't make them bad people. Mm. It just makes you on a different growth path than they are. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. So when you go home, you go home, you know, big boy, Matt, big mm. girl, Clarissa, it's happened to me as well. And I go back and, and I come from, I love them all, but my people are very, very simple people. And there's, you know, very simple, blue collar, hardworking, upstanding, you know, people. Um, and I love them. 
very much. But there are things that are done or said or whatever that I don't necessarily resonate with. It's not, but I will. I sit through the dinners. I go home for Thanksgiving. I go home for Christmas. I go to all the family events and I sit there and I interact with them with love because that's what you need to take home when you go back. You need to take love. Now, a lot of the times as you grow, you know, what's going to happen is they're going to get their noses out of joint. They're going to get their feelings hurt. They're going to feel offended. They might even feel uh, challenged. So it's up to you again with ease, joy, glory, use every word, peace, calm to treat them and meet them where they're at. Mm. Very good advice. I love the uh, the analogy of like the tree, you know, being rooted. You can have a few branches, few leaves, but you're not going to relocate altogether. Um, I used to go back to family events and my stomach would be in a knot. Right. Just in a knot. Right. It, it didn't mean I didn't love them and I didn't really want to see them, but I knew that I was walking into a dynamic mat that no longer served me and was no longer my truth. Mm. Yeah. Um, and... And so only we can change that. You know, uh, the, the toxic stops here, stops right here. So we don't bring that out into the world with us. We don't take it out anywhere. Right. We stop it, yeah. we treat it, we cure it, we love it, we nurture it, we try to change it, we modify it, we use the words, whatever you want to use. And we want, you know, I strive, and what I offer everyone else, uh, offer up to everyone else is, Strive to be a better person tomorrow than you are today, mm. because this keeps you in the constant mindset of growth. And it could be something very little, you know, again, the pillars being look good, feel good, be good and greater good. OK, so maybe I'm, you know, I'm on my diet right now. I want to look I want to, you know, make sure that I promised myself this diet. So I don't want to to, uh, to disappoint myself. And I do it all the time. Don't get me wrong. It happens. But I really want to try to live not disappointing myself, not breaking promises to myself. I'm doing it for my health. I'm doing it for my betterment. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'll, I want to make sure I get those eight glasses of water in, whatever it is. Make it up sure. as you go. But how is it that you tomorrow truly can be a, a better person more than you are today? That's is it the chapter you're going to read uh, yeah. before you go to bed tonight? You yeah. know, what, what's it going to be? That's cool. And that's, I love the advice of it doesn't have to be anything huge, right? Because that's where people can start, you know, that's where the excuses start coming in, right? But it's, yeah. if you're just like you say, the eight glasses of water, a chapter or a day of a sure. book, yeah. wonderful. And then it snowballs from Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Is it, you know, is it that, is it that, you know, maybe you're going to start you know, mastering a new skill or, yeah. you know, jumping on with a new course or class or, you know, get excited. Be careful also about your educative process. You know, where are you learning from? Who are you learning from? What is it that is it serving you? Is it taking you where you need to be? Don't waste time on things that are not serving you. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. So we've kind of talked about, you know, family dynamics. I know that's going to be a big one with uh, folks, especially that are in early recovery, because there is going to be a lot of that, like family dynamic, that, as you yeah. mentioned, the, the, the nod in your stomach. Let's go a little bit further in, just like literally just turn it inside. So if you were to, uh, you know, to talk to somebody that is in early recovery, that still kind of, is, you know, I remember my experience. It was, it was like feeling things out again, right? Because I'd had this drinker persona essentially right this was that was me it was a collapsed distinction between like drinking and basically everything that was the filter i saw my life through right so for me to just put an end to that and re-enter the world i had to do a lot of um you know redefining right. of who myself is we touched on it before like core values and so forth so when you're in that early stage before you're even going out and exposing yourself to social situations I, you know what, let's, let's even get into it. Like when you're talking, you mentioned it there, the four pillars, look good, feel good, be good. Uh, look good, feel good, be good, and greater good. There, uh -huh. Yes, greater good. That's yeah. the fourth one. But yeah. So when you have uh, those under like, how does that apply for what, if somebody is sort of in that beginning feeling out stage about like, okay, yeah. rediscovering themselves, how does that, uh, how would that apply? Well, look them? good just, you know, look good basically means get up, take your shower, put on clean clothes, look in the mirror, you know, shave, do your hair, whatever it is, it's going to help you look in the mirror and go, okay, I've made these first step. I'm yeah. smoking hot, feeling good about myself. Great. Feel good. Diet, exercise, nutrition, drinking the water, taking the walk, getting in nature. I don't know what it means for you, but mm. you know what that means for you. Yes. Be good, learn, 
uh, you know, take a look at your finances, take a look at your education. Do you need to master a skill? Do you need to, you know, read another book? Do you, where is it that you want to go and start implementing your plan to get you there? There are to eight, you know, there are uh, 12 99 classes on anything you probably want to learn on Udemy. There's yeah. no, or, you know, Coursera or uh, Linda, or, you know, if there's, if you're hurting and, you know, uh, financially, there's always a way to learn. There are, there's a plethora of, of information at your libraries. Um, I, you know, I was in one the other day. I was like, damn, I haven't been in a library in a really long time. There's a lot of books. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of yeah. great information there. Yeah. There's always a way to go and learn. If you, if you have the will and you really want it, you will make that happen. And the greater good part, portion of all of that, Matt, is giving back, t- uh, tithing, paying it forward, volunteering. It's doing something, taking the, the focus off of you and doing something good for someone else. Because when you do that, you feel pretty damn good about yourself and you know you've made someone else feel good. And that could be as simple as holding the elevator door open for somebody, helping a woman down the stairs with a baby carriage, uh, standing up in public, in public transportation for the elderly or a pregnant woman. You know, the way we used to do when we were younger, the, mm. the, 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 the common manners, the kindness pieces that we should have toward, toward a, another human being right. will always, doing something good for someone else will always make you feel better. Remember that hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Hurt people, hurt people. So when I said before about stopping the toxic here, you know how crappy it made you feel when you were hurt and by whomever hurt you. Do you want to be the one that perpetuates that and makes somebody else feel like crap? Right. Or are you going to be a bigger person and say, nope, I'm not going to do that. Stop. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to be a really upstanding you know, human being because I want to love and I want to be loved. And that's the way I'm going to make that happen. Beautiful. How, you talked how, about talk about something else, Matt, real quick. Yeah, and yeah, that is go. failure. So failing, right? Ooh, Let's yes. take the word Good fail. Good one. So fail, fail. Your first attempt in learning. Ooh, I love that. Failing is is part of the the, the human uh, um, experience. There's no way around that. We're all failing all the time un- until we get it right. So failing is, oh, I failed. Okay. Not thrilled about it, but the cool part about failure is you're one step closer to getting it right. One step closer to success. The first light bulb that was created by, you know, either Tesla or, you know, Einstein, whoever you want to believe in, it didn't come out perfectly the first time. The first car that rolled off the assembly line at Ford definitely wasn't, you know, the perfect car yet. There yeah. was a lot of learning at, you got to start at, at, you know, uh, at ground zero, you got to start, start at point A. So I, I invite you all to not fear failure, but really to embrace it because, you know, you're getting that much closer to, to success when you do. Remember also loyalty. That's something that a lot of hurt people have not learned is loyalty, mm. right? Somebody wasn't loyal to me. Somebody either screwed me over or hurt me or they were supposed to be a parent. They were supposed to protect me and didn't. We could be here all day on the different case scenarios. But remember that loyalty is when you have my back behind my back. Ooh. Loyalty is when, you know, you have uh, somebody else's back behind their back. So what are you doing to live what I call high? And I love this, Matt, because it's an acronym that I've created because I really want everybody to live high. Honesty, integrity, gratitude, and honor. Mm. If you can live in radical honesty with yourself and with everybody else, and I mean honesty, I don't mean, you know, do these jeans make my, you know, my butt look big. I mean, honesty, honesty. Yeah. You know, you're getting deep and you're going, you're, you're taking that deeper dive, honest. Integrity, to me, is the most important word on the planet, to live in integrity. Mm. Gratitude, always be grateful for all of the lovely things you have and for the possibility to be able to, to you know, to start over with a clean slate. You get to create the, you get to write them a script. You get, you get to direct the script. You get to produce the script. You get to distribute the movie, like the whole thing. It's on you. You get to forget about what you know in the past, because again, the past is only 
uh, uh, it, it, it teaches you the things you need to know. It's not, it's a lesson. It's not a life sentence. Mm, yes. Yeah. That's okay. Really good. Past is a lesson. It's not a life sentence. You can change it at any time. And then when you live in honor, getting back to high, you live in honor. You live in what's right. You know, we all know what the difference between right and wrong is, you know, you know what the difference is. Mm. So if you can live in honesty, integrity, gratitude, and honor, you're, you're, you know, 80% of the game in self, in, in self-esteem. As I told you before, people go, oh, self-esteem, so fluffy and that. No, everything we've just talked about is deep stuff. Mm. It's, and painful, and, and it takes, gonna take some courage. You're gonna have to get, go, let's get back to those big girl panties and those big boy britches. You've got to put them on in order to move forward in growth. And so what happens with you personally, uh, when you have, you know, a, a, a rough day or you get, you, you get, have your, uh, you know, get, you get challenged and you got, you, you know, you get rattled a little bit and you're like, you know what, it's the easier thing to do would not be to live high today. Like, do you have a moment where you can kind of be aware of that? Yeah. What does that look like for you? I rant. Mm. I, I find, uh, you know, the pressure valve. Mm, right okay yeah because nobody's perfect god knows i certainly am not but what the deal is there is that uh, you you rant i used to rant for three days now oh. i'll rant for i'll allow myself three to five minutes interesting you know I'll, I'll, I'll get to it i'll call my mom i'll call a friend i'll do whatever i have to do and go you, and yesterday for example my and i have a freezer in my garage i live in phoenix arizona it's 118 degrees or whatever the hell it is <laughs> this is the freezer in my garage and yeah. the 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 switch the electrical outlet tripped uh, now i don't know when i lost hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of food in that freezer because mm. i travel a lot right but yesterday i went out and found that you know i lost hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of food and not only the mess i had to clean up was epic mm. right now it doesn't really have to do with self-esteem but i was pissed and i ranted for a good six seven minutes and then i just said well it is what it is mm. and the first go-to is they didn't just call me and tell me i have cancer right i didn't just get a phone call that told me that somebody dear to me died uh, my country is not at war. I don't have active military and you know tanks in my streets. It, I, it sounds really strange, Matt, but that's my default. Mm -hmm. I immediately go into, is it really that important to warrant such a, a uh, reaction from you? Yeah. When what's really important and what really matters is something completely different. This food can be replaced. I'm sorry for the loss. It was an expense, but it's not the end of the world. And so I catch myself now, whereas before, uh, years ago, I would not have done that. So yeah. this is another really great way. Stop yourself immediately. Do the ramp. Get yeah. it out. Do the pressure valve thing. Yeah. You know, maybe don't do it around other people if you can help it, you know, because yeah. it's never really pleasant for everybody else. <laughs> sure. But if you need somebody else and they happen to be there, okay. Hopefully the, you know, they're your friend or somebody that loves you a lot and you move on and you yeah. move on, you know, I the trash man came today, the, you know, the food is all gone, went into the trash you yeah. know, truck today and next. Right. And yeah, what's next. Right. I like the, uh, the idea that you a lot, like the pressure valve analogy is, is tremendous because yes. there's, yes. there's a lot of, um, you know, when I learned, when I was learning, when I was growing up, it was just kind of like, kind of, you know, temper that and keep that down. Now I'm learning the older that I've gotten. I'm like, it's very important to allow yeah. every emotion yeah. that comes up and That's find right. a, a proper way for it to come out. Otherwise it's going to come out in a sideways, yeah. awkward way where you don't, and in the way yeah. that you didn't want it to. Mm -hmm. So I, I really like that. The whole idea of pressure. And self-care. We do a lot of self-care too. Yeah. Guys really need to pick up on self-care a little bit more, you know, go get a haircut, maybe get your nails done. I don't know, guys, some do, some don't, I don't know, maybe get a massage, maybe, uh, you know, go to a game maybe. And I know there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of triggers that you have to be careful with in mm. the beginning when you're going through, you know, your a journey. Right. Um, and so you have to stay away from friends that do drink, or you have to, you know, your friends need to be mindful that they cannot drink around you as you're moving toward your, uh, your recovery. But, um, yeah, I mean, I get it. I got it. And I hope that, you know, our conversation has been helpful to, to your listeners. I guarantee it has. You've, there's some, a lot of great stuff. What I love about 
the way that you present things is like those the uh, the analogies and then the uh, like the acronyms. Because for me, that's like a wonderful way to pass on knowledge because it sticks. I, like I'll remember later today, tomorrow, I'm going to remember, I got to live high, right? It's kind of got that, that cool ring to it. Pick out the kind of, it has a cool ring to it, right? And it's kind of funny now, too. You can now, honestly, Matt, walk around and tell everybody yeah. in recovery, hey, dude, hey. you can live high. <laughs> And they'll be like, what? I thought we're, I thought we're past that. I'm like, no, no, this is a different no, high. Exactly. This is a different high. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Quite, you know, yeah. exactly. So there you go. Like now we've had a moment, we've laughed about it. So that's what makes, to me, that's what makes, or, uh, sorry, uh, information stick. Cause yeah. you can say stats and all this. I'm like, okay, that's cool. But if you have some framework for it to stick like you do, boom. Yeah. Okay. I'll remember yeah. this now. So super cool. I really and appreciate fail, it. And fail being your first attempt in learning. I love know? that too. Just, yeah. I, just I'm allow a big, yourself. Uh, and it's, it's I'm, I'm fortunate that you brought that up because I've had an episode before, just a mini episode on failure and how important it is and reframing it. So I yeah. really, I really love how you brought that up with that uh, particular. No, I haven't heard that before. The, uh, the first, what is it? First, first attempt, attempt in, learning. oh, so good. I'm going to steal that. You might have some royalty checks coming your way from me because I'm going to be, I'm definitely. Here's another one, one. <laughs> you know, nothing has any meaning except for the meaning you give it. Mm. Nothing totally. has any that. meaning except yeah. for the meaning you give it. So yes. again, who's got power over you? Right. Who's got the power? Who who have you given your power away to? Yeah. Um, and I and I and I invite everybody to just take it back. <laughs> yeah. Stop giving your power away. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Final question for you. With some of these, I'm just curious how with the uh the case studies that you have had. Uh, what kind of results did you have in like a, say a 12 week period or however long that the course was, or the, uh, the case study, what, what, what kind of like tangible and intangible results did you have? From well, it's course? funny you should say, um, I'll tell you, I don't know if, the, I think there were more, it was more incremental in the sense that mm. there were little mini breakthroughs, uh, along the 12 weeks and, uh, invariably, um, there was at every session we had in the mastermind, there were, there were tissues. Uh, you know, uh, Kleenex and clean up, you know, <laughs> as I yeah. said before. And um, the gals would, you know, co would come in and, you know, one girl said, Clarissa, your book has changed my life. Um, and they, you know, they were able to work, as I said before, work on things you knew you had to work on, but, you know, push down, like you said before, or came up with things that they didn't even know was an issue. Mm. Like I've been doing so-and-so, you know, such and such for such a long time. I didn't realize the pattern I had created. Yeah. It just so, sort of seemed normal to me. Sure. But I realized that, you know, so that lots of realizations, lots of breakthroughs, you know, mini or maxi, um, you know, the reciprocal part is the 12th chapter, which was a big one for me because, you know, we give, 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 do, 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 do. And very, it seems that nobody seems to do anything for us. Mm. And that used to, I mean, every once in a while I'd stop after I was done giving and I'd go, well, damn, you know, like, what about me? Right. And of course it was, a, it was a very, it wasn't certainly an honorable question to be asking because you should give and forget, right. give and forget, not forgive and forget, give and forget. Yeah. And, um, and so somebody says to me once, you know, Clarissa, it's just really hard to give to you. You do it all you have it all hmm. you you know yeah interesting. and so i'd be sitting there going damn i did everything for everybody else but you know every time i ask for something nobody's ever there and that is something to be really careful about um again the recip the, you know reciprocity there's a law the universal law of reciprocity right be mindful that there are people that want to give to you and accept even if it's something as simple as a compliment you know, how many times we talk about, you know, getting that compliment and saying, oh, this old thing, or, oh my yeah. God, no, this makes me look fat, or, oh, yeah. <laughs> or people totally. just don't know how to gracefully accept a compliment. Yeah. And all you have to do is say, oh, thank you. That's it. Yeah. Conversation <laughs> over. It's that damn yeah. simple. Yes. So reciprocity, you know, give and take, allow people to, to give to you. And certainly, you know, it, 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 love relish the idea of being able to give everything you got to others mm. Ooh, i love that. and i mean your heart in your heart yeah, not in, you know material possessions but your <laughs> let's heart. yeah let's be clear about this yeah, yeah here's my house <laughs> and my car no. Um, yeah. no i didn't mean it that way you yeah like that. i love that let's that's a great place to pin pin the episode where is if, if folks want to 
where are you most active online if you if folks want to follow you find your book uh you know yeah. obviously we'll put it all in the show notes but I'll give you opportunity as well to, to mention thanks right now. yeah uh, you know it's in the barnes and noble store which is great you can go to barnes and noble online you can go to amazon online and as far as me um i'm everywhere on social so you can just find clarissa burt pretty much anywhere beautiful thank you so much for coming on today clarissa welcome i i 